Psalms chapter 49 To the chief musician, a psalm for the sons of Korah again. And again, these are, these are the, the Levites. They were the unique. Even though they got to handle the, the most holy stuff, they never got to see it. Because it was put on their covers. Hear this. All right, give your answer. Give give your ears. All ye people. Oh, okay. This psalm can go for Jew, Gentile, or saved. There are three classes of people that the Bible writes to. Jews, the saved, or everybody. This psalm breaks out to tell you it's for everyone. Give ear. Hear this, give ear. You better listen to this. It's important. All ye inhabitants of the world. You mean the Native Americans that they don't know yet? You mean the South American people they don't know yet? Yes. This psalm is directed to the whole wide world, even the world they didn't even know. Both low and high. What's that mean? Rich and poor together. Those that are short and those that are tall. Those that are rich and those that are poor together. Everyone. The entire population of the world this psalm is written to. And it's funny how everybody, you know, we want, we want to take what the Bible says for the Jews and apply it to us. And we want to claim this promise. We want to claim that promise. It's, <coughs> it's not too, you know. The Israel was not to us. Here's a psalm. Here's a passage. An entire chapter written to us. And how often do you hear it preached out of the pulpit? My mouth shall speak of wisdom. Does your mouth speak of wisdom? Do you have the knowledge of God? And the meditation, the prayer, and the thought that you, in the study you put into the Bible... Of my heart, not head, shall be of understanding. Wisdom and understanding. I will incline my ear again to a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the heart. Well, Jesus spoke parables. And we had the, the parables recorded in our Bible for all of us to read. A lost man, a Jew, and a saved person can pick up a Bible and read it. But I don't think Jesus spoke with a heart. Maybe he did. In some cases, I don't know. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil? What is their fear? And if this is written to people in all the world... That means you're going to be judged on your fear, no matter if you're saved or lost. Because you're to fear the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, you got a problem. Because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The Bible says in Timothy, God has given us Christians a, a sound heart, a sound mind not to fear. The only thing you're to fear is fear of God. Some idiot guy said the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. You're an idiot. You don't know what the Bible says. You are a total idiot. And come from a church that you came from and to say something as stupid as that. When the iniquity of my heels shall compass me about. I have no idea. Pay close attention to the heel there. They that trust in their wealth. See, this is written all the world. James writes much on the rich people. James is a tribulation book and saying, listen, you know what? When you take what Jesus said about the eye of the needle and the camel and all that, and how hard it is for the rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you know in the tribulation it's going to be almost near impossible for a rich man to be saved? 
There's only one way for him to keep his riches. He's, he must receive the mark, the name of the beast. Don't trust in your wealth. What's it going to do when God takes it all away from you? How many people at the, at the, at the climax of the beginning of the depression of America, when their wealth was gone, they went to the bank and there was no bank. How do you know they trusted in their wealth and not God? Because they're the ones that came flying out of the office buildings. I want to have many born again Bible believing Christians just sat it out. Say, Lord, we're broke. We ain't got no job. We ain't got nothing. And what you give us is the blessing of Thanksgiving that you've given it to us. I think America's going there. I think one of these years, if not this year, and I don't know, but one of these years, I think it's going to come complete flat out. Nothing. And boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. There was a guy in the book of Luke. Oh, look at how great I am. I got everything. I'm going to tear everything down, rebuild bigger barns than that. And God says, Out fool. J.C. Penny was a rich man. He loved the Lord. He tithed. He gave his employees day off. And, and he's dead. He's in heaven. And look where the wealth and all that is today. His entire. Uh, empire, if you want to call that, or his stores are almost ready on the verge of bankruptcy. Why? Because they left God for the money. Now, will I tell you, if you tithe a business and God will make it prosperous, no, God will take care of you. And you may still lose the business. But there are people today, they're losing money, they're losing their jobs, they're losing everything because that's what they're trusting in, and that's a judgment of God upon this nation. How dare you put my name on your money and you don't trust in me? That's a lie. And all these people, oh, we want to fight in God, we trust in the and God's up there in heaven laughing. You know why he's laughing? Because the money that God gets is George Washington. Benjamin Franklin, Andrew Jackson, whoever's uh, Benjamin Franklin, and whoever's on the hundred dollar bill, that's the one that goes worldwide. Poor old George Washington is left in the plate of the, of the church. All George goes is the church. Everybody else in the president dominations and God we trust travel the world over. Abraham Lincoln and all that. You would be shocked to find a Benjamin Franklin in church. Whoever's on a hundred dollar bill. And you're going to hell account to your money. Some people today, they trust in stocks and bonds and, and CDs and everything. Well, I'm telling you, the banking system fails and the banking system is a failure. It's amazing it's still going. Like the Postal Service. <coughs> it's going to come to an end one day. And you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ in the great white throne judgment with absolutely nothing. You can't take a hearse with a U-Haul. You may have pockets in your clothes, but there ain't going to be nothing in there for you to take. It always amazes me. One of the options you can get with, with a casket is you can get a lockbox. Why? Well, you can put your personal identity, the guy told me. Why would I want to do that? For a keepsake forever. They're not going to use it. Don't charge me for it. None of them can buy none of them can by any means redeem his brother. Nor give to God a ransom for him. So you take that verse there. Can I read it again? None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. So what do you do when you go to church house and says, if you give me money, and we'll pray for the dead? According to scripture, you can't. You can't even buy yourself. Never mind your friend. You may have a loved one, a dear one to you. They're not saved, but don't try to offer God anything. They must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Nothing you can do. 
No more prayers you can do will get them saved unless they call upon Jesus Christ as your Savior. And don't you dare tell those people, well, you know, you're saved. It's easy believes them just to get your loved one in. Because you'll find out you damned their soul. Just to get them in. You notice there's no money in that verse. See, some people read money. How about I just get, I love you so much, just say this prayer and you can get ransomed into, no. Well, Lord, if I if I help out the church and, and do everything like that, and then my family, no. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceases forever. The only thing that can buy back a soul is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's it. Any dispensation. Those that died in the Old Testament went to Abraham's bosom because Christ has not shed his blood yet. God says life is in the blood and the blood is in the life and I've given it for, a, for an offering. Jesus said, about, uh, he said, don't fear them that can kill the body, but fear him that can kill the body and cast your soul into hell. That he should still live forever and not see corruption. You're going to live. There is an afterlife. Saved or lost. And money can't buy you into heaven. You will not see corruption. You'll be, your body will be resurrected. You'll live forever. And you'll be cast, and cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. You know... Well, Lord, didn't I give all this money to church and God keeps excellent books? He'll open the books. And, well, yeah, you did give money to church. But how much is it worth to my son? I'll put it on the scale. This is my son's blood. This is everything he's done for sins. And this is your money. It ain't going to equalize. Because if, if money could do it, then Jesus would come down here with the biggest pocketbook wallet you ever would find. And he wouldn't need to go on the cross. For he seeth that wise men die. Uh-oh. They're so wise they still die. You know what science is going to do as far as death? Absolutely nothing. Likewise, a fool and the brutish person perish. The, the, the cruel person. So he that has all the wisdom, all the diplomas on the wall, is going to die just like the, the fool or like the, you know, the person that causes trouble and problems in people's lives. They're going to be perished. So you take that parish and you run that to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Perish means you go into the lake of fire. You go into hell. That's what perish means. Isn't it funny? Ha, 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 ha. Why did they call some pastor's houses to perish? It's like they call, in the Roman Catholic Church, some of their buildings, they call it the rectory. Oh, that's a great name. And they come up with a paper called the bull. <laughs> yeah, that's bull. Why would you name a church place parish? And leave their wealth to others. You cannot take it. And there are people so foolish, they get buried. All the pharaohs had all their treasures buried with them in those pyramids. And guess what? You know, half the stuff they find in those pyramids, it's not even half the stuff that's there. Most of it was stolen by grave robbers over the years. You know, they say pharaohs were gods. They worship him as God. What a great God that you can walk in there, grab all his junk, he can't take it to the afterlife, and you can take his body and, and stand up for all eternity in a museum behind a glass door. Great God! You're going to leave your wealth and everything to other people. Most of them likely in America to the government. 1 Samuel 25, 25 for that verse. Their inward thought is, you know, they don't tell anybody, it's what they're thinking inside, that their houses shall continue forever. All right? We live at 508 Fairmont Road in Daytona Beach. 
Where is the Indian house that was here in this spot when the Indians were here? Or the Native Americans? Where are all the teepees that were here in the Native America? Where are the original homes, I mean the original homes, of the pilgrims when they first came to America? Where are they? The original homes. And Jesus said, him that hears my word is like a man built his house upon a rock. The only thing that's going to last is what you build for Jesus Christ. Everything you do against the word is going to be on sinking sand. And they're dwelling places to all generations. No. You know what I found out? I believe that lie. Well, if you rent, own a house, you don't have to rent no more. Go get yourself a house. You know what I found out when I got that house? I got the biggest headache in my life. You know what I found out by owning a house? I never want to own another house in my life. You know what happens when you leave a house and you don't take care of it? It's going to fall down eventually. If you ride through New England out in the countryside and, and, and the towns and all that, you'll see barns are like, <laughs> they're ready to fall down. And somebody built that barn. Somebody built that house. This thing is going to last forever. And we're going to store all of it. And they're gone. They're buried. They're somewhere in eternity today. And the building that they put their hard work into is... They call their lands after their own names. Seems like every... City or every place I know they have an MLK Street Avenue Boulevard Washington this Jefferson that What's that going to be in a millennium all those names are going to be erased You imagine some idiot Save Christian who's into America Tea he's gonna walk his butt over here and try to find Washington DC Smack him across the face 15 to 13 times for each colony it's not going to be here. You know, I'll make a name for myself. I'll build this building and put my name on it. And you know what? The only reason why I studied Bacchus, as far as Bacchus Hospital in North, because his family was in reference to Isaac Bacchus and those that loved the Lord and separated themselves and were persecuted by the church. The Congregational Church, that's the only reason why I would study the Bacchus. And as far as the, the, the name who's, who built that hospital, which I thought would be good, no. He had, he had no background. I don't even remember what his name is today. But you ask me Bacchus, I'll tell you about Isaac Bacchus, who was a great Baptist historian. I, I don't even remember his name, his mother. She was saved. How about that? And you know what? God says, I'll give you a new name. Imagine somebody, you know, calling a piece of dirt after you. Nevertheless, let's move on. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. Oh, they, they praise George Washington, Jefferson, all the signers of the Constitution, and, and MLK, and Santa Claus, or whatever, St. Nicholas, whatever. They gave them honor, but where are they today? You know, you don't even know. Nail down to me 100% where George Washington is today. 100%. And if you give me an answer, I'll call you a liar. Okay? I've read his diaries. All these people that they pray. All these people that just had one of those Tonys or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, all right, a piece of stupid statue, and they're going to die one day. He is like the beast that perish. Uh-oh. So you're going to die just like a dog. You're going to be like an alligator and take your last breath. You know, you breathe the same air the dog breathes, a snake breathes, a chicken breathes. What is man? This their way is their folly. What's the folly? Yet they pros yet their prosperity, children and ancestors approve their sayings. See love. 
The folly is, look at all this I got, look at all the houses I call it after my name, and, and it's folly. And all their children, ancestors, and future children, hey, isn't this so great? There are people today that in the family are raising up MLK, and that guy was filthy. And he's so filthy, the government has to hide his records. Locked up. And they just think he's so great. Was he great in the eyes of God? The king. Dunlop disease over the belt. Had all this money and all these, these records and, and all that. And his family praises him. He, you can go over to his, his house and all that. And, and Christians just admire him. Does God know him? You know, he died worse than an animal. The report is that he died by OD. You know what? I've never seen a dog purposely take pills to kill itself. A cat died better than those men. John F. Kennedy, if he had never gone to the theater... They told Paul, you know, I want to go, don't go in the theater. If he had not gone to the theater, he would not have got killed. He got killed with a bullet. You know how a dog or cat gets killed with a bullet? When they got rabies. I've seen the cops do it. Now, the J, now I'm not saying JFK had, had rabies, but the way of the beast. A dog is shot when he's got rabies. And if he's put to sleep because they can't find a home for him at, at, at the at the kennel, at least they give him a little, uh, you know, a needle or something like that, and maybe painless. <coughs> Sila, gotta be a tribulation passage or, or a second advent passage around. This whole thing about rich people. Is a tribulation passage. They're not going to make it. And you know who owns most of the stores today? Macy's. Um, Calvin Klein. I can't think of other names right now. My head's. They're Jewish. You know who's in charge of the banking industry? Jewish. You know what Jacob's time is called? The time of Jacob's troubles, the tribulation. A lot of Jews ain't going to make it to the tribulation. Like sheep. Well, you run. You, oh, let's go run to, to John, uh, John chapter ten. But let's read. Like sheep, they are laid in a grave. So the same sheep and the lost. Goats are put into a grave. You know, again, they find animals on the side of the road. They'll scoop them up with a shovel and take them somewhere, and they'll bury them. I know Washington Park in, in Groton, Connecticut. I know the, the city of, what was the town? Yeah, the city of Groton. That's where they, they'll dig a hole in the park somewhere, and that's where they bury the animals that get killed on the road. You know, somebody who has no money, no family, or anything like that, or even maybe unknown, that's the same thing. They'll have, a, they'll have a special place where they dig up the ground, they throw the body in. I was even told by a thing I said, that it's not even six feet deep. It's just a hole, just enough to bury them. Death shall feed on them. Every man is going to die, and, and, and your body is going to corrupt until the Lord calls us home, and to that final judgment for the lost. Every man that is born will die unless the rapture. One hundred percent death, and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning. That is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ.
that morning. We are going to upright by Jesus Christ. We're going to have dominion when we come back with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're some of us are going to be seated as rulers of cities. Some of these big names that they lift up today in America, are they going to be there? Uh, Lord, I forget his name, but Tebow. I apologize for not mentioning his name wrong. I should know. That guy is going to have a city. That guy proclaims to be saved, a born-again Christian, and goes out on the street and preaches and helps missionary work. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall I name another football player that proclaims to be saved and doesn't do nothing for Christ? There was another football uh, player. Uh, he's dead now. He's gone on to heaven. They used to ridicule him. Make fun of him because he's saved. Now, I don't know if he did anything for the Lord. But if he did, those two will have, at least one of them will have a greater thing than, than all the football players all put together from day one to today. What T-Bone done has done better than any Super Bowl trophy. You know, they put a name on that, that trophy, and God will put a name on him that will never be erased, a, a, a name person, person, uh, personified by Jesus Christ himself. And if he's done what the Lord has done to do, he's going to wear a crown. And their beauty... You get all these Hollywood hollets and all that. They got more plastic in them than a penny bubblegum toy. You put them on a microscope, you'll find made in China, made in Japan, made in Taiwan. Everything lifted up, everything poked out, everything phony shall consume in the grave with, from their dwelling. Listen, if the Lord tarries 20,000 years and they come to America and they dig up the graveyard and they find these harlots, the only thing they're going to find is silicone and plastic. Beauty is vain, Proverbs 31 said. A woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. You better watch that beauty because God can give you a motor vehicle accident. He can give you fire. He can give you something to ruin that beauty. And those that were beautiful and those that were Hollywood scarlet, most of them will admit it was a, it was an unadventure. It was a, a, a defiance in their life, their beauty. And the Bible says a man that looks upon a woman that lusts after in his heart has already committed adultery with her. Lady, if you dress provocative, God will charge you with that adultery, even you two have not come together. I believe that if a woman dresses provocative and is raped, it is partially her fault. According to Matthew 5, 24, I think it is. 25... Where Jesus said, if a man looking upon a woman lusts after her in his heart, he has already committed adultery with her. The Bible tells a woman she ought to be dressed appropriate. Some people don't like that. That's tough. That's the Bible. You go yell at God. But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave. Can you say that yourself after these 14 verses? Even if you are rich, can you say, God's going to redeem my soul. I am part of God. I am a child of God. I am saved. And though they bury me in the ground, I am going to get victory. I'm going to be called out by Jesus himself. Or I may be raptured if the Lord raptures his church when I'm alive. For he shall receive me, Selah. See, this psalm is written, woe unto you, woe unto you. Your money can't do it. Your money can't do it. But God can do it for me. And he wrote to the whole world and all the people. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich. Wow. 
Why would you be afraid? Why would you as a saved Christian or a saved person in the Old Testament be afraid when one's made rich? Because then he gets the power. You know what Washington, D.C. is trying to do right now with, with, with their power? They're trying to make you broke so they can put you in a vice. That you have to be 100% reliant on them. They don't want you to have money. When the glory of his house is increased. Don't worry about how you know he puts an ad on to his house and, and builds more, gets more junk. Who cares? We've already read about the rich man. You stay faithful to the Lord and you stay right to the Lord. You keep earning those crowns and you get what you get coming to you rightfully. John uh, John writes in, I believe it's 2 John, he says, don't lose your reward. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. So the bumper sticker, he with the most toys in the end, is dead. If you want to know that, ask any pharaoh over Egypt. Go to the museum, pay the fare, walk up to the thing, say, can I, can I open up that glass thing, and walk up to the pharaoh and say, Hey! Look at all the stuff you had in, in your in your tomb. Excuse me, I'm asking you a question. Hey! Talking to you. He's dead. And they have the act of preserving that body so good and so well, and he's probably in hell burning. And then you read Luke 16, what the rich man said. You know what that Pharaoh's saying? Go tell the Egyptians about me. I'm wrong. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul. That's the guy in Luke. He made his soul happy. Eat, drink, and be merry. And men will praise thee. Posters. Little, little cards with a name. <coughs> <clears throat> the name and, and, and their, their status on it. I want to get your autograph. I want to take this person to the prom. I want this person's records or whatever junk they have. When thou doest well to thyself. When thou doest well to thyself. Compared to what he said with verse 15. Doing well is doing what God wants you to do. You know, there are some rich houses in, in Volusia County, and there are some people living underneath the bridge, and they're going to get greater than what that rich man's going to get. And he may not know where his food's coming tomorrow. Well, that rich guy's got steak and everything, and, and die and go to hell. He shall go to the generation of his fathers, the grave. How do you know that? Go to the graveyard, and you'll see a whole section usually of family names. You'll see some places in some cemetery, they got this one big monument, it's got the last name, and everybody in that generation is buried somewhere in that spot. The fathers. They shall never see light. Now he's speaking as far as death itself. He ain't talking about resurrection. He ain't talking about the judgment. He ain't talking about eternity. He's talking about when a man goes into death. That's it. There is no more light. There is no more light. And I don't care if you put a telephone in your casket. Lady, you ain't going to make no phone calls. I've seen the light. No, you haven't. You better watch out. The Bible says that Satan is, is an angel of light. Man that is in honor. And understandeth not. Raise this man up. Look who this man is. Understand it's not what? What is understanding in the Bible? It's your relationship to God. If you don't know nothing about God and you are lifted up, you are an honor, you're like the beast that perish. You're just a dead dog. At least that dead dog gave some child fun, fun in his life. A little loving in his life. By the way, a dead dog, a dog, any dog in the New, in the Old Testament, the Jews was an unclean animal. 
to throw them out when they're dead. Your life without the understanding of God is just like a dog, dead. You might as well just go step out in front of a bus if you don't want to know about God. If you don't want to have anything about know anything about God. You lived your whole entire life as a waste. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art.